Moon update is probably the biggest, smallest update I've ever seen in TF2. Normally, I'd expect a changelog that's literally over a hundred lines long packaged in with a major update, but nope. In this random, unsolicited patch, we saw a huge revamp to the way casual and competitive matchmaking works, reconfigured the competitive mode ranking system, fixed a mile-long list of bugs, and made a bunch of balance changes to a handful of weapons like the Pyro's Flamethrower and the Panic Attack. But the weapon change that somehow managed to redirect some of my hype for competitive mode actually working for once was, of course, the subject of this video, the short circuit. For a long while, I think a lot of people have kind of neglected the short circuit, which is probably a symptom of how many changes and revisions it's gone through over the years. When the short circuit was added during the Mano Technology update way back in 2011, it was almost a completely different weapon. The only constant that's remained since then is its unique ability to delete projectiles out of the air, something that Engineer, who is one of the biggest magnets for projectile-based classes, can use to his advantage when faced with a bit more spam than he can handle. But there's always been this weird stick surrounding the short circuit, and depending on who you talk to, you can get pretty much every opinion about this thing, ranging from considering it overpowered to being completely useless, which results in the short circuit being the least used engineer secondary in the game. For me, I personally fell into a middle ground about whether it just didn't do enough compared to the pistol or the wrangler, or if it was just more of a giant middle finger to soldiers and demo men than anything. But overall, I've always thought that the short circuit was pretty underrated. It was a fun alternative to using the wrangler, which is both a better and way easier easier to use option for when you want to keep rockets from damaging your sentry gun, and it was a pretty reliable aid for tracking down invisible spies or finishing off a jumpy scout right in front of you that you just couldn't seem to land that one last fatal blow on. But as of the out of the blue moon update, none of these opinions matter anymore. All that matters now is that the engineer is now Mega Man. <laughs> Ridiculous, over-the-top, art style encroaching laser ball aside, the short circuit is actually pretty much as balanced as it ever has been as far as I'm concerned. Instead of deleting projectiles in a short 180 degree arc in front of the engineer's face, the rocket removing power now resides inside of this electric glowing ball that may or may not have been borrowed from Erasmus' spellbook. Better lawyer up, Conagher. The stats on the actual weapon don't really do the energy ball justice when it comes to exactly how this thing works, so let me just push my glasses up real quick and bring you guys up to speed on exactly what you can expect when you Hadouken all over your enemies. First of all, the energy ball is launched by using Alt-Fire, aka your right-click button. I know this seems like it's pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people either don't read or how many drunk college students I've encountered who haven't played since 2012 and end up just tasering a sticky trap to no avail. In fact, while we're on this subject of the primary fire for this weapon, let me just say that this pitiful little cattle prod attack is probably a big reason why players who try it out for the first time are discouraged from ever using it again. It's practically useless. No one in their right mind would ever even consider trying to damage someone with the short circuit's primary fire because it requires you to be less than 3 feet away from your target just to do 10 damage per 5 metal with every pinpoint accurate zap. You'd be better off just shooting them with your shotgun at that range. The alt fire, however, is the real meat of this weapon. It costs 65 metal to to launch the energy ball which travels in a straight line for a pretty good distance before eventually exploding on its own. Along the way, it will delete any projectiles that enter its radius. You can also fire it at walls or the ground to delete sticky bombs with the explosion that happens on contact. The energy ball travels pretty quickly, a little bit slower than a rocket, so lining it up with a projectile or an enemy at a distance takes a bit of practice and timing. But let's back up for a moment and talk about the metal cost for the energy ball because I think it's quite possibly the most important stat. Basically, 65 metal is a lot. With firing one energy ball being more expensive than placing down a teleporter, you really need to be conservative and careful about when you decide to launch one. In other words, you should be treating these energy balls just like little disposable buildings because they pretty much cost about as much as one. Unless you have an infinite source of metal like a dispenser or a payload cart, you're only going to be able to fire up to three energy balls before you'll need to refill your metal supply, so you can't just sit there and spam them. You'll need to be observing incoming damage and judge whether using 65 metal is actually worth 
preventing it and then time your shot so that the ball actually connects. The risk of missing your shot and wasting a good chunk of your metal supply is worth the potential reward of hitting and erasing one or more projectiles that would have otherwise killed you, your buildings, or your teammates, which makes the steep cost of 65 metal a pretty decent balance decision in my opinion. Consider this when trying to decide whether to use the short circuit to defend your buildings. The average projectile aimed directly at a building is going to do about 100 damage, right? In most cases, 100 damage wouldn't one-shot anything at full health besides a mini sentry. So if you can see that one rocket is heading towards your building, you'd actually be better off just tanking that damage and instantly healing it back with your wrench. If you remember the max metal per swing numbers that I went over in my engineer rules video, you'd know that healing 100 damage will cost you about 33 metal, which is almost half as much as you'd spend deleting the projectile that would have caused that damage in the first place. You could even say that deleting two projectiles with one 65 metal energy ball would cost you the same amount of metal as just taking the damage and healing it off right away. So at some point you'd probably have to conclude that this energy ball isn't really worth the effort or the metal in most defensive circumstances. It's much easier to just tank your buildings with your wrench, even more so with the Wrangler active. But that doesn't mean that it's useless. There can be many moments of value, such as dealing with a long range direct hit, deleting a bunch of stickies that would have destroyed your building in one detonation, or preventing an oncoming flurry of spam that you could have never been able to tank in the first place. It all comes down to just assessing the situation and making quick judgments based on what you have available. Very similar to the Jungle Inferno changes to the Rescue Ranger, which encourages metal management in exchange for long range healing, the Short Circuit encourages the same awareness for your metal count, along with a certain amount of projectile zapping skills in exchange for a pretty valuable ability. Compared to the old design, which was essentially just a worse version of the Pyro's Air Blast, the energy ball mechanic makes the short circuit even more unique and honestly, a lot of fun. But we're not done talking about what this ball of fun can do because being an orb of pure electricity, of course, it can damage enemies. About 15 damage actually, which isn't really anything to write home about, but when you consider the fact that it can penetrate players without losing momentum and deals that 15 damage per half second or so that the enemy is making contact with the ball, you've got yourself some potential for a couple frags. The damage stacking tends to punish enemies who are attempting to escape, making the short circuit operate very much like an even better version of the Righteous Bison when firing it at players who are either walking away from you or just throwing a ball or two down a crowded corridor where it's difficult to escape its trajectory. It's also not too bad at spy checking, it definitely is not as reliable as it used to be, but if you happen to catch an invisible spy running in a straight line alongside your energy ball, they can get pretty messed up. But to be honest, the addition of this energy ball has effectively switched the utility of the short circuit from a defensive leaning weapon to an incredibly useful offensive combat tool. Most of the time I've found my success with the short circuit when taking on individual players in 1v1 death matches. In particular, fighting against soldiers is now much more interesting than just praying that they miss two of their rockets before you can get close enough to meat shot them. When battling a soldier or any projectile class with the energy ball, you can reliably give yourself a short period of safety from taking rocket damage when you close the distance needed to land your effective damage. In the best case scenario, you can throw down a mini sentry, switch to the short circuit, and fire a safety ball at your opponent to both shut down the rocket or grenade aimed at you or your gun, then quit quickly switch to your shotgun to start dealing damage. At this point, you've effectively done a multitude of things that have helped you. You've placed down a mini sentry without a fear of getting it one shot before it can completely build itself up. You've prevented your opponent from doing anywhere between 50 and 100 damage to you before you can get close enough to be effective with your shotgun. And if you manage to hit the enemy with the ball itself, you've gotten a free 15 damage on them, even more if they happen to be backing up, which is a common response to fighting a close range weapon like a shotgun. Even after the energy ball has done its job, and disappeared, leaving you susceptible to a continuing barrage of rocket fire, ideally you've already gotten off a good 90 or more damage without taking any damage yourself. At this point, you should be able to tank at least one rocket before you can land another meat shot, and also, your mini sentry should be finished building by now, and can easily assist you in your finishing blow. Every point in this fight is based on what each player is able to pull off with aim, timing, and movement, and a bit of planning ahead on the engineer's part. If the soldier starts to circle strafe the engineer, 
engineer while firing rockets, it will be much harder for the ball to consume his rockets unless the engineer compensates for it by firing at an angle. If the engineer doesn't hit the meat shots he needs to before the energy ball disappears, he could easily be stuck with no more options and simply lose the deathmatch by fault of his own inferior aim. The soldier could just observe that the engineer already spent 100 metal on a mini sentry, 65 metal on an energy ball, and thus won't be able to fire another one, and just wait out the ball before starting to fire his own rockets. I could go on and on about the different rock, paper, scissors situations that can come from a short circuit engineer encounter, but my main point is that this weapon now makes the fights it participates in actually interesting and fun for both parties. It relies on the user's ability to use it rather than just existing as a get out of spam free card with a low skill ceiling like it used to be. In my opinion, the short circuit has earned its place in between the two other engineer secondaries as a decent all around damage prevention tool that, to my surprise, with the addition of a goofy looking laser ball, takes the most skill to use effectively, and that's great. And I've got a few more rapid fire facts about the short circuit, so here we go. Fact. Not only can you never get a random crit with the short circuit, but you also can't use the Kritzkrieg on it. However, it can be affected by the buff banner to grant mini crits. Fact. Because the short circuit's ability to delete projectiles isn't limited to what's directly in front of the engineer, it can be used quite effectively to delete a sticky trap on corners or on a control point from safety. So no more risky defusing. Fact. The projectile destroying energy ball is actually a projectile itself, which means it can be air blasted by pyros right back at you to deal a mini crit. And yes, it does then become their own energy ball and will destroy your own team's projectiles. But wait, if the energy ball is a projectile, does that mean that it can destroy itself? Fact. No, it technically doesn't destroy itself, but rather, when two opposing energy balls collide, they both merely explode as if they had hit a wall. This of course makes for some pretty epic NGV NG Dragon Ball battles. This video is about to be over and I haven't summarized what I think about the new short circuit, so here we go. So what do I think about the new short circuit? Well, overall, I think it's a huge improvement from the stats to cycle through over the years. The energy ball is an all-around interesting, fun, and generally pretty fair mechanic that I can see becoming a staple of both defensive and offensive engineer gameplay. But this high praise doesn't come without a few nitpicks here and there, one of which being that I still don't really understand why the primary fire is even a feature, since it's largely unused and only really complicates what should be a straightforward design. I think that they should just move the energy ball to primary fire and get rid of the 10 damage taser thing altogether. I also don't think it's completely fair that the energy ball can prevent soldiers and demo men from explosive jumping. If you followed the progress of this feature that turned out to be a bug that I tried to convince Jill to be a feature that eventually got listed as a bug and subsequently squashed, then you'd know that I tried. But long story short, I don't really like that the energy ball can potentially do this. I also don't really like that I have the most issues when coming up with an ending for a video, so, yeah.